Are you interested in improving your topspin forehand? Well, if the answer is yes, you're in the right place because I've got some specific ways that are going to teach you and show you how to swing low to high and generate that consistent topspin forehand. My name is Jeff Salzenstein, founder of Tennis Evolution, former top 100 ATP pro, a USTA high performance coach, and I am so committed and excited to help players all over the world, just like you, improve your topspin forehand. So I'm gonna go through some of the steps, even some drills that you can do that can help you with that. First of all, I wanna start out with the grip. I'm a big believer that you should have a semi-Western, maybe even an Eastern grip. So what I like to see happen is, if you can see this wide bevel here, I like to have the index knuckle on the uh, index finger, of course, on the bevel right next to this wide one right here, okay? And I wanna make sure that the heel of the hand, okay, is underneath the racket enough, okay? So a lot of people, they swing, uh, they have the grip, and the index knuckle is on this wide bevel, and the heel of the hand is actually also on that bevel. But we've gotta get that hand underneath a little bit more. I call it a semi-Western grip. You can do this with an Eastern grip. You can move the knuckle so that it's on the top wide bevel here, but it's a little bit harder to generate topspin. Again, you can do it, but I prefer more of a semi-Western grip. Try either one, see what works best for you. Another thing I want you to consider is that you wanna make sure that you have the index finger spread. A lot of players hold the racket like this. We wanna spread that index finger, we wanna angle the hand, we don't want the hand in what I call a block grip, the fingers together, the, the hand really squeezing the racket tight. Get that index finger, that trigger finger spread, get that hand angled on the racket, get the heel of the hand off of the racket as well. Because what this is going to do, when you hold the racket correctly, it's going to allow you to swing the racket in a more relaxed fa fashion. At the end of the day, we wanna reduce tension, we wanna increase feel and relaxation. And if we don't get the grip right, we can't create that feel and relaxation that we're looking for. And this step is actually missed by many players and many coaches. And that's why I'm spending so much time on it because not only do I want you to have that semi-Western grip, maybe an Eastern if it works better for you, but I wanna make sure that you get the hand angled correctly, the index finger spread, the heel of the hand off the racket so that you can really let the hand play and, and swing the racket in a more relaxed fashion. So the next thing that I want you to focus on, and uh, we're gonna talk about a drill that you can do. There's many players that when they swing the racket, the racket face stays in this plane like this. And in order to hit a lot of topspin, the consistent topspin, you actually want the racket face closed down like this. So the way that can happen is if you have the right grip. If you have a continental grip, I can't really turn the racket down. That's why the semi-western allows you to close the racket face like this. So I like to have the racket face closed like this, and so you could just do a drill where you just have the racket face closed like this. Some people are gonna be here. If you're in the semi-western, you'll be more closed. And you start here, and then you just brush up the back of the ball. So you're here, and you brush up the back of the ball. A lot of players that are trying to learn topspin, they take the racket back like this, and the racket is in this position, even with a semi-western grip. So they get here, and they're in this position like this, and you can see the racket face is square we gotta get that racket face turned down a little bit more so that we can brush up the back of the ball. So I like, again, just have the racket relaxed down like this, it's closed. You're, you can see how the racket face is underneath the ball, and then I brush up, and notice my low to high swing path. Low to high, okay, like that. So you can practice that again on your own, you can just drop the ball, you can have someone feed you balls where you start here. Now once you get the hang of this, hopefully, you can learn how to make your first move in this position right here. And you can even see the racket face is closed down a little bit right here. It's not, it's not uh, square. So it's down like this so that when I bring the racket down, it's just very natural for it to set in this position. So I like to break things up in parts. If people can't get it right away, I like to break it down in individual segments until they're able to put it all together. So once you get it here, then you can start in this position and try to find this position in a continuous fashion. You don't want to start here and then drop and pause too long and start back up again. So take it bit by bit and see if you can get that improvement to happen. Okay, so we've covered the grip. 
We've covered this drill where we start with the racket face closed, okay? Now, I want you to focus on the swing plane when you're swinging low to high. And one great drill is what I call the fence drill. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna go back, you can find a fence on the court, and you're gonna go back and you're gonna swing along the fence. So basically you're gonna swing slowly along the fence and you'll notice the strings are gonna stay on the plane of the fence a really long time until they come off and I finish over the shoulder. We wanna practice this low to high swing path with the correct grip and, and we're swinging up and over the shoulder like that. And just learning how to keep the strings on this plane longer will allow you to create topspin, but also give you the extension and the length that you're looking for. Too often players swing and they pull off the ball to try to create topspin. I want that extension and I want that low to high swing path. This is that fundamental foundational forehand that I think everyone should have before they start swinging across their body. I think it's very, very important to develop this. I found that a lot of people with their forehands, it breaks down under pressure. If they're so used to swinging like this and their arm gets heavy, they haven't practiced going low to high enough and getting that extension. So you, you swing a few times up against the fence, you get that feel where the plane, uh, the strings stay on the same plane longer like this. And you'll notice I'm not breaking my wrist at all in here to try to create any topspin. I am staying on that low to high swing path. And that's how I can create easy topspin when I play, okay? So the swing path, the low to high swing path is very, very important to learn how to create that consistent topspin without manipulating the arm and the racket down in here. Now the final thing I wanna point out, and this is a, I think a ninja tip that no one really talks about. I get a hard, I, coaches give me a hard time with this one because I'm so fixated on the finish. A lot of coaches love talking about what happens at the contact point. And there is a place for that, but I believe that if you finish a certain way, you can actually create a specific result with your swing. And so if I wanna hit a flat forehand and when I drive, I'm gonna finish with my wrist in a more neutral position like this. And you'll see how the racket is on edge. But if I wanna to create topspin, I can actually focus with what I call the wrist break, with the heel of the racket, the, the butt of the racket facing towards the net like this. So I know this is happening after the ball is gone, but I feel like the intention, the intention of finishing like this with the strings, with the tip of the racket pointing back to the back, back fence instead of straight up, and the wrist, a little wrist break here, and the butt of the racket facing towards the net, I'm getting nice topspin on that forehand. So I can drive the ball with topspin, or I can actually go more low to high and create more shape on that forehand to hit the ball higher over the net. So these are some great step-by-step -step tips and drills that can help you with your topspin forehand as it relates to the low to high over the shoulder swing path. I think it's very important to develop your forehand fundamentals by focusing on these drills and these tips. And as you advance, as you get more confident, you can hit dip different types of forehands with different types of follow-throughs and swing shapes. Okay, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Click the link in the description below to get more free tips to help you get your tennis to the next level. Also, somewhere in this video, you can click a link or an image that will take you to the next page where, again, you can get access to more free tips that we're creating over at Tennis Evolution. My name is Jeff Salzenstein. I'm committed to helping you. I wanna help all players all over the world improve faster and easier and get the tips and the information that's needed to stop being frustrated and to keep improving. Thanks so much for your time today. Subscribe to the channel, give us a thumbs up, leave a comment below, and make sure that you click that link in the description below or a link somewhere in this video. Really excited to help you out. We'll see you at the next video lesson. Thanks so much for your time today.